Welcome back guys. In today's one we are delving deep into symbolic AI, and how it will be the key going forward to the thinking machine within the cloud. Just as many enterprises are starting to dip their toes into the artificial intelligent world, with rudimentary machine learning, and deep learning models, a new form of the technology known as symbolic AI is emerging from the lab, that has the potential to append both the way AI functions and how it relates to its human overseers. Symbolic AI's adherents say it more closely follows the logic of biological intelligence because it analyzes symbols, not just data, to arrive at more intuitive, knowledge-based conclusions. It's most commonly used in linguistics models such as natural language processing and natural language understanding, but it is quickly finding its way into ML and other types of AI, where it can bring much needed visibility into algorithmic processes. The technology actually dates back to the 1950s, says expert eyes Luca Scagliarini, but was considered old-fashioned by the 1990s when demand for procedural knowledge of sensory and motor processes was all the rage. Now that AI is tasked with higher-order systems and data management, the capability to engage in logical thinking and knowledge representation is cool again. One of the keys to symbolic AI's success is the way it functions within a rules-based environment. Typical AI models tend to drift from their original intent, as new data influences changes in the algorithm. Scagliarini says the rules of symbolic AI resist drift, so models can be created much faster and with far less data to begin with, and then require less retraining once they enter production environments. Because they are bound by rules, however, symbolic algorithms cannot improve themselves over time, which is, after all, one of the key value propositions that AI brings to the table, says Jans Osman, CEO of Knowledge Graph Solutions Provider Franz Incorporated. This is why symbolic AI is being integrated into ML, DL, and other forms of rules-free AI to create hybrid environments that provide the best of both worlds, for example, full machine intelligence with logic-based brains that improve with each application. This, in turn, enables AI to be trained using multiple techniques, including semantic inferencing and both supervised and unsupervised learning, which will ultimately create AI systems that can reason, learn, and engage in natural language question and answer interactions with humans. Already, this technology is finding its way into such complex tasks as fraud analysis, supply chain optimization, and sociological research. This creates a crucial turning point for the enterprise, says Analytics Week's Jelani Harper. Data fabric developers like Stardog are working to combine both logical and statistical AI to analyze categorical data, that is, data that has been categorized in order of importance to the enterprise. Symbolic AI plays the crucial role of interpreting the rules governing this data and making a reasoned determination of its accuracy. Ultimately, this will allow organizations to apply multiple forms of AI to solve virtually any and all situations it faces in the digital realm, essentially using one AI to overcome the deficiencies of another. For organizations looking forward to the day they can interact with AI just like a person, symbolic AI is how it will happen, says tech journalist Surya Madula. After all, we humans developed reason by first learning the rules of how things interrelate, then applying those rules to other situations, pretty much the way symbolic AI is trained. Integrating this form of cognitive reasoning within deep neural networks creates what researchers are calling neurosymbolic AI, which will learn and mature using the same basic rules-oriented framework that we do. While this may be unnerving to some, it must be remembered that symbolic AI still only works with numbers, just in a different way. By creating a more human-like thinking machine, organizations will be able to democratize the technology across the workforce, so it can be applied to the real-world situations we face every day. When Jason Rubin joined Oculus VR in 2014, he was handed a copy of Ready Player One, one of the books that helped define the metaverse. As he was hired, Facebook acquired Oculus and he started to have some deep conversations about the metaverse, the universe of virtual worlds that are all interconnected, like in novels such as Snow Crash and Ready Player One. For years, the metaverse strategy meant that the company was focused on virtual reality games. It has also been developing technology for augmented reality glasses, and when Ruben spoke to us a year ago, he was head of 2D games and cloud game streaming. 
but after Facebook renamed itself Meta in October, and CEO Mark Zuckerberg outlined the company's ambitions to build the metaverse. With investments of more than $10 billion a year, Ruben emerged as the vice president of Meta Content. My role has changed now and I am really focused on the VR side of things, and the metaverse side of things, he said in a fireside chat today with me at GamesBeat and Facebook Gaming Summit. This is quite a long road, I think probably you'd want to ask Mark himself where he started getting seriously interested in AI, but I can tell you for the entire career I've had at Meta, it has been ingrained in our future, Ruben said. The metaverse used to be on the back burner. In the past, immediate goals like getting content ready for the Samsung Gear VR mobile virtual reality device could easily take precedence. Then Ruben had to commission 30 different games and apps for the launch of the Oculus Rift. By and large, that succeeded, and the Meta Quest 2 is now the top-selling VR headset for virtual reality. In the meantime, the company also spread out from games and was working on social VR, with applications like socializing and working in mind. They started thinking into the future on how we would ladder up into the metaverse. And I think what's changed recently is that all of the things needed to make the metaverse happen, not only at Facebook, but I think why in the wider community around the world have suddenly started to happen, Ruben said. We didn't know cryptocurrency would become what it was, but there are interesting things going on there. We didn't know VR would be as successful as it has been. We had a fantastic holiday season this year. But that has happened. He added, we didn't certainly know that something like Roblox would be where it was or Fortnite for that matter when Oculus was acquired would be where it is, but the world has slowly but surely over this period of time been spending more time together in 3D social spaces. Then, you have orthogonally everybody kind of going crazy over NFTs as the on-ramp to the metaverse. But Rubin said that the onset of the pandemic, which forced people to work from home, is bringing the metaverse to the front burner. He said it would be much better to do virtual events inside the metaverse, rather than just on video calls, while we can't do them safely in person. I think all of these things have come together to say now's the time, Ruben said. The world is headed towards the metaverse and Facebook wants to be part of that. So with the rebranding and everything else, we're very serious about this. This is what we think the future is. He pointed out that collaboration will be necessary because the metaverse is not going to be built by one company. The metaverse is going to be this thing that you do, moving back and forth between identities and back and forth between various interesting 3D social spaces. Having the power of Facebook behind it is like having the power of Facebook making VR happen. It took Facebook a lot of time and energy to get it to happen. And it's now happening. This, again, has been a fantastic holiday. I think that's necessary to help the industry move forward. At the same time, I think the metaverse industry is being moved forward by other companies and by individuals at home who are going to end up creating a lot of the content that we end up using and loving, monetizing it and ending up being large businesses. He said that Facebook would work with other large companies as well as individuals who are going to be contributing to the metaverse, 